Welcome to Maths with EJD. In this video, we continue with set theory as we consider Cartesian products. First, let's talk about the definition of Cartesian products. All right, so definition of Cartesian products. So we see that the Cartesian product, Cartesian product of N sets of N sets A1, A2, A3 up to AN is the set, is the set of all ordered, ordered is very important of all ordered n tuples, n tuples. And that is a1, a2, up to a n, where, where each ai, that is each of these a1, a2, up to a n, where each ai belongs, belongs to the corresponding, to the corresponding, set ai what it simply means is that this small a1 belongs to set a1 this small a2 belongs to set a2 and this small an belongs to the set an all right so and that is for i equals one two up to n that is the idea of a Cartesian product. So of course, this is the generalization of this. So we can actually define a Cartesian product in terms of, okay, I, I guess I can just do this. Um, if, for instance, if we have two sets, if we have two sets, if we have two sets, then we say it's, so here, what we have are N tuples. So if you have two sets, it will be, it will be two pairs, all right? So we'll talk about pairs in that case. Then if we have three sets, if we have three sets, we'll be talking about three, three, we'll be talking about, uh, instead of n tuples, right? Uh, okay, if we have two, we talk about pairs, right? If we have three, we'll be talking about triples. We'll be talking about triples. Then if we have four sets, four sets, We'll be talking about quadruples, quadruples, and so on and so forth. So if we have three sets, for instance, we can say the Cartesian product of three sets, A1, A2, A3, is the set of all ordered triples. That'll be A1, A2, A3, where each AI belongs to the corresponding set AI4. I equals one, two, three. So we can, if it is for two, then we say the Cartesian product of two sets. A1, A2 is the set of all ordered pairs, A1, A2, where each A1, A, A1 belongs to the corresponding set A1 for I equals one and two. So we can go on like that, you know, quadruples, pentuples and all that. Okay. So, but this is a generalization when we talk about N tuples. So that's the definition. So what's the notation for that? How do we uh, show... Cartesian products, for instance. So it's simple. If you have set A1, you know, we are talking about a product, right? And it's called Cartesian product. So you have set A1 times set A2 times set, okay, well, set A3, if you like, you can still do that. And all of that goes all the way to set AN. So what you're simply going to have is this. It is going to be the collection. It is going to be the collection of all N tuples a1, small a now, a2, a3, up to a n, such that a1 belongs to big A1, a2, small a2, belongs to big A2, small a3 belongs to big A3, and that goes on until you get to small a n belonging to big A n. So that is what the notation is. So with that now, we can actually, we can look at a possible 
exam we can look at possible examples right um for instance okay let, let me talk about examples now um i guess i can change this to say this so let's have some examples so imagine that you have a1 to be the set of one and two and you have a2 to be the set of x and y okay so it's first example now so if you have this what happens it means that um it simply means that okay we have an a3 actually so if you have a3 which is alpha beta okay so that simply means that a1 by a2 by a3 is simply going to be the collection of all possible uh of all possible triples so now here we are talking about triples because we have three sets so and the way to go is pick one okay so you have it the first triple will be one from here then x then alpha then you can keep the one still you know you have one x beta so once you are done with that you go to the next uh, uh, uh the next uh element of set a1 which is two so you can have two x alpha and then you have two x beta once that is done you know then you move to then you move to the y part right you begin to do y so everything you did with x you do with the rest so you have one so you pick one again y alpha one y alpha then one y beta and then you go again two y alpha and then two y beta and all this so this is so this is the set this is the um what is it now the uh what are we considering sorry <laughs> this is the cartesian product sorry this is the cartesian product of these three sets so and you know you see that that's the set so it has eight elements one two three one it has eight triples better said eight triples one two three four five six seven and eight okay so that has eight triples in the set so that's one what if we take another example we say two now so for two we have set a1 of course it doesn't only have to be a1 let me use b1 in fact because it can be anything so b1 is the set is a singleton set of one and you have eight uh, so b2 b2 is actually a set with elements a and b and then a3 if you have a3 so a3 has x y z a3 has x y z okay so what happens oh sorry this is b3 now so it means that b1 times b2 times b3 will simply be the set of this possible triples first pick one so you have one a x then still one you have one a y again one a z okay that's one thing so now you go to b so you have one b x you know that's one b x now then you also have one b y and then you have one b z and those are the possibilities you can have that's one two three four five six uh triples in this case okay so now we are going to see the properties of cartesian products and that will establish the cardinality of uh of triples i mean of cartesian products okay um so i guess i need something i'll say this now okay so let's take example three for example three now we have 
for any post five sets. So say we have C1, C1 has red. Then we have C2 and it is small and medium, small and medium. We have C3 and C3 is light and heavy, light and heavy. That is what C3 is about. And then we have C4. C4 is plastic. C4 is plastic. Let's say this is a set of plastic. It's a single set containing just plastic. And C5 has a... Okay, I already have C3. Okay, let's say C3 is circle and square. Okay, um, C3 is actually circle and square. Let me do that again. C3 is circle and square. And then C5, C5 is, C5 is now light and heavy. Light and heavy. That's the set. So what do we do? Now we need the Cartesian product. So it will be um, ordered pent uh, five now, pentagon. So ordered uh, pentuples, if you like to say that. So in this case, now it means we have C1, C1 times C2 times C3 times C4 times C5. And that is simply equal to the set of all possible pentuples. That means we have a red, we have a red, small, circle, plastic, that is light. Okay? That's one, one way. Another way is we have a red, we have a red, small, uh, square, plastic, that is heavy. Okay? That's another possible pentuple. Then, what's another possibility? We have, uh, so... We have, we can have red. Instead of small, now we have medium. Red, medium, red, medium, circle, plastic, light. Red, medium, plastic, light okay first of all we have red small circle plastic is that only plastic yeah plastic is the only thing there so we expect to have one times two two times two four times one four times two eight so we should have eight possibilities so we have red small circle plastic light red small okay 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 um okay Let's follow the pattern so we don't get lost in it. Okay. So red, small, circle, plastic, light. Then we have red, small, still circle, still circle, plastic, and then heavy. Okay. That's that. And then since we've exhausted this uh okay it's still red small since we've exhausted circle then we go again that'll be red small circle plastic plastic red small circle plastic plastic Okay, now at this point, we have to change. Since we've exhausted for circle, we go uh, for square. Red, small, square. Red, small, square. Red, small, square. Plastic, light. Then, plastic, light, red. Then, we have 
red, small, square, plastic, heavy. Okay, plastic heavy. All right. And then we'll do the same again for medium. Okay, we'll do the same for medium. That's the only, so we run it through again. So we have uh, red, medium, everything, just medium replaces everything, so it replaces small. So red, medium, circle, plastic, light, okay. Then we have red, medium, circle, plastic, heavy. Then again, we have red, medium, squ uh, square now, square, plastic, light. Then we have Red, medium, square, plastic, heavy. Okay, this is a lot. It's and it can be really confusing if you don't pay attention. So that's how that goes. So that's that. So let's look at properties of of. Cartesian products, okay? Properties, properties of Cartesian products. Properties of Cartesian products. Okay, so the first thing is that Cartesian products are non-commutative. So we talk about non-commutativity, non-commutativity non-commutativity so it means that the order the order of elements matters the order of elements matters so in general so in general we need to see that a1 times a2 times all that up to a n is not equal to a n times everything up to a two times a one. You know, in simple terms. Okay, yeah, we can take an example to demonstrate that. So take the simple example. So you have um a one is actually one, and a two is actually a. You know, that's pretty simple. So A1 by A2 is simply, you know, this is just uh, one L, single, two singleton sets. If you take the Cartesian product, you're just going to get one A, okay? But then see this, you see that A2 by A1 is simply going to be, A2 comes first, so you have A1. So an order is really important here. When we talk about Cartesian product, normally in set order don't doesn't matter, but in Cartesian product order do, uh, does matter. So in this case, now you see that a one by a two is not the same as a two by a one. So Cartesian product is not commutative. It's not commutative except if the elements, uh, except under strict conditions. I think we can leave it at that. So. And then we go for another property of Cartesian product. Another property is the cardinality. Now you see that you can easily get confused, right? Like the other time when I got a bit stuck. So the, this cardinality idea is what helped me. So you can already know the number of the number of uh, the number of elements you can you are going to get in that set. Okay. So and that is simply what is going to be demonstrated by this: that the number the number of elements the number of elements in the number of elements in a1 by a2 by all that up to an is the product is the product is the product of the number of elements in each set the number of elements in each set the number of elements in each set in each set 
So what that simply means is that if, if the cardinality of set A1 is two, that is set A1 contains two elements and set A2 contains three elements, okay? Set A2 contains three elements and set A3 contains four elements, okay? The cardinality of the Cartesian product of the three sets, A1 times by A2 by A3, is actually simply going to be the cardinality of A1 times the cardinality of A2 times the cardinality of A3. So before you start, you can already know the number of uh, the number of triples you are going to get. So this will simply be two times three times four. So it means if you have set A1 with two elements, set A2 with three elements, and set A3 with four elements, you are going to have 24, 24 triples all together. You know, and that's actually a lot. If you have a, if an actual, if I have an actual example, so that's one other property. So the last property is the property of associativity. Associativity. Okay, associativity. Okay, so that is Cartesian product, product, Cartesian products are associative. Associative. What that means is that it doesn't matter the, the two you take first. As far as the order is the same, it will be fine. So Cartesian products are associate, associative. They are associative, meaning, 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 meaning the grouping, the grouping of sets does not affect the outcome, does not affect the outcome, doesn't affect the outcome. For instance, if you have, if you say A1 by A2 first, and then multiply that by A3, and then you go on to AN, it's exactly the same. If you say A1 first, and then you now have Say, if you like, you now have A2 by A3 second, and then you now have that up to A and anyhow you do it. As far as the order is the same, the result is the same. So Cartesian products are non-commutative. The cardinality is such that it is the product of the, the cardinality of the individual set, and then they are also associative. So those are three key properties. Uh, that you need to pay attention to, especially the cardinality. So you can easily know the number of uh, pairs or triples or n tuples you are going to get based on the cardinality of each set that you are considering. Okay. So uh, in this case, let's talk about let's talk about um, some other ideas. For instance. Let's talk about ordered n tuples and relations. So ordered, ordered n tuples, ordered n tuples. So talking about ordered n tuples now, we are saying that each element, each element in the Cartesian product, in the Cartesian product, each element in the Cartesian product is an ordered n tuple is an ordered n tuple so maybe like an ordered pair ordered triple ordered quadruple ordered pentuple and so on and so forth is an ordered 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 something like this ordered okay so this is ordered ordered n tuple fundamental which is fundamental fundamental in defining relations so we are talking about ordered n tuples and relations okay so i still going to talk i think we should talk about relations better on that set theory so after this video we should have uh, some videos down the line we have that so fundamental in defining in defining relations relations between multiple sets between 
multiple sets. Okay. So, for example, for example, if we have A1, a singleton set of one, and A2 is a singleton set of X, then A3 is also a single set, a singleton set of alpha. So that means that, um, you know, A1 by A2 by A3 is simply, of course, you already know the cardinality is going to be one. The cardinality of each set is one. So one times one times one. So the cardinality is going to be one, meaning that the Cartesian product is going to have only one triple. So it means we have the set of just one triple. That's one X and alpha. And this one X and alpha now is an ordered triple, is an ordered, is an ordered triple representing a relation representing a relation. So that's the connection between ordered n triple and relations. Now let's talk about relations uh, in, uh, actually. So when we talk about relations, what do we get? Okay, so of course, what we have defined here, um, yeah, we're talking about ordered n tri uh, triples and relations. And what we have done here is just to talk about ordered n tuples. Okay, so now let's focus on relations proper now. So there's a connection between them. That's why we are doing that. So for relations, we know that um, a relation, a relation between, a relation between n sets, n sets A1, A2, up to An is a, is a subset, is a subset of their Cartesian product, the subset of their Cartesian product. So if you have N sets A1, A2 up to AN, so if you have N sets A1, A2 up to AN, so a relation between those sets will actually be a subset of their Cartesian product. So for example, if you have A1 to be a set of one, two, and A2 is a set of X, Y, all right? And A3 is a set of alpha, beta. Now look at this. So we can say that a relation, a relation defined as this, a relation which is a subset, you remember this symbol of subset, a relation which is a subset of A1 by A2 by A3, could be, could actually be this. That is uh, one X A, then two Y B, two Y beta, one X alpha and two Y beta rather, one X alpha and two Y beta. Normally you know that if you do A1, A2, A3, uh, A1 by A2 by A3, the Cartesian product, you are going to get two times two times two, that's eight. So you are going to get two, eight outcomes. And one of the outcomes would be one X alpha, which is represented here. Another one would be one X beta, which is not here. Another one can be two X. It, it, you can actually have two X alpha. You can have two X beta, you know, making four already. Then you can have two, you can have uh, two X out. Okay, you can have one X alpha, one, x beta you can have two x alpha you can have two x beta then you can go for one y alpha one y beta then you can have two x alpha and two two x beta then you can have two y alpha and two y beta and this is it so this is like the first and last in the range so this could actually be relations under the Cartesian product. So we are si simply saying that a relation between n sets a1, a2, and an is a subset of their Cartesian product. So you, you may have actually defined a relation that picks out some elements of your Cartesian product. That's what this is talking about. Okay. So let's also talk about uh, Cartesian products in higher dimensional geometry. Cartesian products in higher dimensional geometry. Cartesian products in higher dimensional 
geometry. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about higher dimensional space, higher dimensional space. You know, normally when we walk in two dimension, that's when we talk about X and Y, in three dimension, we talk about X, Y, Z, but we go, we can go further like four dimension and everything, which is actually not, not reality. Beyond three dimensional, everything is now, is out of the physical, you know? So the Cartesian product, the Cartesian, the Cartesian product of N sets, of N sets like, the real number system in n dimensions, all right, actually represents, it represents all points, all points in n dimensional space, in n dimensional space, n dimensional space, where, where each point, where each point is an n tuple. Each point is an n tuple, and that n tuple is actually the collection of x one, x two, you know, x three up to the last one x n, because this is n dimensional, right? So, one example would be that in three D space, that's three dimensional space. It means that we have real number by real number by real number, okay, and that represents. That represents all points, all points x, y, z. So x in the first one, y in the second one, r in the third one. That's three-dimensional space. Of course, you remember this can also be written like this, r power three. That's three-dimensional real number, uh, three-dimensional space, okay? Now let's talk about graphing multivariable functions. Graphing multivariable functions still under the Cartesian product in higher dimensional geometry. So what does the graphing look like? So graphing multivariable functions So graphing multivariable functions. So here it say that the graph it doesn't mean we are going to plot a graph actually. the graph of a function, the graph of a function, the graph of a function defined as f, which is a1, uh, let me do that properly, a1 by a2 by all that up to a n minus one mapped onto a n, right, is actually a subset, is a subset, is a subset of the Cartesian product, it is the subset of the Cartesian product A1, A2, all that up to AN. Okay, so that's some kind of abstracting. But in the next video, we're going to talk about some real life applications of Cartesian product. So that is what the idea of Cartesian product is. And we can see that in our day-to-day -day activities, we get to, to use this a lot. So watch out for the next video where I'll talk about some practical things, um, you know, some practical applications of Cartesian products. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, be, be sure to do that. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can get alerted each time a new video is released. Then comment. You want me to explain something. You want me to, you want to show me some of the practices you have done, you know, in the past or whatever you want to tell me, feel free to comment and then um, tell me, uh, I mean, share and also like, right? See you um, when we come on for the next one. Bye.